It's not a new thing trying to politically demonize black Americans. It's been this way for over 400 years. So let's talk about how white politicians always portray black American participation in politics as a threat to try to justify undercutting black Americans political power so they could maintain complete control and keep those called black Americans mentally and financially enslaved after the infamous emancipation and we will discuss California even though California wasn't a slave state California did some pretty dreadful inhumane things to those called black Americans yep some said that the oppressive laws against black Americans gave white men a legal right to murder without repercussions we will talk more in detail about these things when I come back Black Americans have pursued equal political participation since before the Civil War. But the federal, state, and local governments of the United States have suppressed and continue to suppress Black American votes and Black American political power. The United States did not explicitly prohibit states from discriminating against Black American male voters until almost a century after the nation's founding and it denied black American women this protection from discrimination for nearly a half century more. After the United States amended the Constitution to protect the voting rights of American citizens against racial and gender discrimination, for African Americans or black Americans, this right existed only on paper for most of American history. Whites terrorized black American voters with violence to prevent them from voting while federal, state, and local governments ignored the violence, failed to prosecute offenders, or participated in the violence themselves. States, especially in the South, passed vagrancy and curfew laws to criminalize black Americans, strip away their right to vote, and prevent them from organizing politically. That part reminds me of what Fred Hampton said. Check this out. We're going to fight racism, not racism, but we're going to fight in solidarity. Bobby Seale is going through all types of physical and mental torture. But that's all right, because we said, even before this happened, we don't want to see the racism States found legal loopholes for the voting protections in the U.S. Constitution, including literacy tests, poll taxes, and other devices used to prevent black Americans from voting in elections. States also barred black Americans from serving on juries, effectively denying black Americans other opportunities to serve in civic and public life. These restrictions secured the power of white supremacists and local, state, and federal government, allowing them to block hundreds of civil rights laws and rewrite many of the country's most important pieces of 
legislation to exclude or discriminate against black Americans over centuries as black American activists struggled and made advances towards equal political participation federal state and local governments throughout the United States continue to pass laws issue court decisions or take actions to smother black American political power in recent years, the Supreme Court has issued decisions eliminating the protection of the Voting Rights Act as federal, state, and local officials have continued to take actions that impair Black Americans' ability to vote and express their political voice. Despite the historical advancements Black Americans have made in political participation, Black Americans remain underrepresented both in elected office and in the policies enacted to meet black American communities needs. California imposed similar restrictions on black American political participation throughout its history. Though California professed to be a free slave state when it joined the union, white and black Americans did not possess the same freedoms. California refused to ratify the 14th and 15th Amendments for nearly a century. And it built many of the state barriers to black American political participation as those used in the South, such as poll taxes, literacy tests, and the disenfranchisement of people convicted of felonies. The state also enacted other legal barriers such as its law banning any non-white person from testifying in any court case involving a white person. While California eventually eliminated many of these restrictions, its adoption of these discriminatory practices had had long-standing effects on black political participation, representation, and the current inequalities that persist within the state. Now, what we will be doing is discussing the long history of white officials portraying black Americans under a bad light, political-wise. And trying to make it seem like they are a threat and it was only done to undermine black people's participation in the political arena also we'll be we will be discussing the early history of black americans political participation from the beginning of this country to the end during reconstruction we will discuss the many devices local state and federal officials use to suppress black americans political power as well as the voting rights legislation that the united states and california have enacted after centuries of black americans sacrifice and struggles and i find it i found this um report or article about a month ago and I'm, I decided to do it now, considering, um, you know, the, um, what is it? We're coming up on a new election. I decided to do it now because of this new election, just to shed more light on how black folks have been used as a pun in everybody's game. And at the end of the day, the only ones who appear to win are the ones who did the conniving and were corrupt. And it had, you know, they didn't do any, in other words, black folks didn't get help at all. They were used, but they didn't get help. And California wants to pride itself on being a, a state that didn't have slaves. They did not participate in the slave game. But California did its, only, did its own dark and dirty, inhumane things. You might not have been a slave state, but you were terrible towards those called black Americans. So what does it matter if you weren't a slave state? Okay, let's continue. White politicians have long portrayed black American political participation as a threat in order to undercut black American political power and maintain the racial hierarchy of enslavement even after emancipation. 
or as I like to say, the infamous emancipation. During and after Reconstruction, white Southern Democrats used fear of Black American political power to propel themselves into office. For example, in 1870, West Virginia Democrats used the ratification of the 15th Amendment to provoke fear that Black Americans would threaten the white man's government. After Democrats won the governor's seat and control of the state legislature in West Virginia, one Republican observed that hostility to Negro suffrage was the prime element of our defeat. In 1901, the president of the Alabama Constitutional Convention warned against the menace of Negro domination to justify the state's efforts to establish white supremacy in this state. White politicians continue to employ the same tactics throughout the 20th century and into the 21st century, despite the nonviolent protests led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and others during the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s. White Americans portrayed African American civil rights activists as violent rioters and criminals. Ooh, does that sound familiar? Every time black Americans protest for whatever reason, what do these white politicians always seem to say? But then they want to turn around and ignore their history of violence in this country when things didn't go their way. They would have violent riots, burning down things, murdering black folks. Let's continue. Exploiting this racist imagery, then Senator Richard Nixon promised law and order. During the presidential campaign of 1968, preying on white fears of societal upheaval amidst the civil rights movement, this move contributed to Nixon's victory in 1968 election, beginning what became known as the Southern Strategy, the Republican strategy to win votes from the South by appealing to the racial prejudice of white Southerners. The same stereotypical imagery persists in American politics. From its beginning, the United States excluded enslaved black American people from American citizenship, declining to count them as full people. See what they're doing today to these people called illegal aliens? An estimated 1,000 illegal migrants stormed the port of entry into El Paso, Texas on Sunday, forcing Border Patrol agents to put up barriers and shut down traffic on the city's international bridge. Throwing them out citizenships like it was hot cakes. Let's continue. In 1789, the U.S. Constitution included a third fifths clause, counting enslaved Black American persons as three fifths of all other persons for the purpose of establishing the number of representatives each state would have in Congress, as well as the number of electoral votes each state would cast in a presidential election. On one hand, the three fifths clause dehumanized enslaved black Americans by not counting them as a full person by allowing pro-slavery Southerners to partially count enslaved people toward their total number of electoral votes and representatives in Congress, even though enslaved people could not vote or express any political voice, the Constitution gave the states that enslaved them much more power than any would have had otherwise. As you see, that was a perfect example of how this country routinely use black Americans and then give them feces back in return. We gon' dehumanize you, but the states that had the most slaves had the most power. You see how they how you see how they do and they still doing it to say, still doing the same things today. For example, Southerner Thomas Jefferson would not have won the presidential election in 1801 without the additional electoral votes given to Southern states based on the number of Black Americans they enslaved within their borders. 
Further, the manner in which the federal government counted the enslaved population of black Americans erased their humanity. The 1850 and 1860 federal census did not list most enslaved people by name as they did for white Americans, but by the name of their enslavers. And you see how by doing that, they made it very difficult for black Americans to trace their ancestry and then they won't show us proof show us proof fool you know what you did you made it very difficult for people who look like me that have a long history in this country to trace their ancestry you evil wicked snake you let's continue while denying enslaved black Americans their citizenship, the United States also denied free black Americans the right to vote. When the framers signed the Constitution in 1787, they left voting laws to the states whose laws protected the right to vote only for white male property owners. Though a few northern states would eventually extend the right to vote to black Americans by the time of the American Civil War, most states, including every southern state, prohibited black Americans from voting. During Reconstruction 1865 to 1877, the federal government aimed to give newly freed black Americans access to basic civil rights. The Civil Rights Act in 1866 granted citizenship to anyone born in the United States, regardless of color or previous enslavement. The 14th Amendment, birthright, citizenship, and civil rights permanent. By achieving these changes, Black Americans not only redefine their own citizenship, they redefine citizenship for all Americans. Birthright citizenship might not have come into existence in the United States without black Americans struggle against slavery. And it helped open the door to citizenship for all immigrants and their U.S. born children. See how the things we do end up helping everybody. The things we fight for, the things we struggled for, the things we struggle with in this country eventually ends up helping everybody every group even these illegal aliens who are crossing crossing the border freely today our struggle our people's past struggles and fights is helping them today see how the case for reparations is so great in this country it's so great that it make these white folks who are rich shudder because they know the wealth they have 90 percent of it if not 99 percent of it was contributed by our people's fight and our fight today let's continue congress also recognized that political rights were essential to black american civil and economic rights so the 15th amendment was ratified in 1870 which prohibited states from discriminating against voters based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. However, the 14th and 15th Amendments had limitations. The 14th Amendment did not protect black Americans' right to vote. Instead, the 14th Amendment only punished states that legally denied male citizens the right to vote by reducing their number of representatives in Congress. A penalty that has never been reinforced while the 15th amendment prohibited states from denying a person's right to vote it contained no enforcement mechanism without an act of congress in 1870 and 1871 congress passed several enforcement acts giving the federal government the authority to persecute violations of the 15th amendment but in 1875 the u.s supreme court held that because the 14th and 15th amendments only empowered the federal government to prohibit discrimination by the states it did not empower the federal government to prosecute the private white militants who use racial terror to suppress black american voting and to the extent that the 15th Amendment protected black American men in the right to vote, it did not extend the same protection to black American women 
who would have to wait another half century for the 19th Amendment in 1920. Black Americans responded by taking full advantage of their new political rights. Black Americans held conventions across the country and participated in state constitutional conventions to secure their voting rights. Republicans in Congress increasingly began to believe that they needed to overhaul Southern governments and ensure that ex-Confederates did not return to power. As a result, the Congress passed a series of laws from 1867 to 1868 called the Reconstruction Acts, which required most ex-Confederate states to hold constitutional conventions and write new state constitutions acknowledging Black American civil rights. The Reconstruction Acts guaranteed Black American men the right to vote for constitutional delegates and on the new constitutions across the south in 1867 black american turnout ranged from 70 percent in georgia to 90 percent in virginia black american votes were nearly unanimous in support of ballot measures to hold constitutional conventions to amend their state constitutions, no guarantee equal rights. Hundreds of black American men served in the Southern State Constitutional Conventions under the Reconstruction Acts, and they participated alongside white Republicans in writing new constitutions which protected equal voting rights, civil rights, and educational rights, although usually in segregated facilities for African for black Americans. And then people want to foolishly say black folks didn't do nothing. They didn't do nothing. You know what? If it wasn't for the hands of black folks and the blessings that's attached to those called black Americans, this country would be worse than a third world country. You better recognize and you know that. That's why they don't be pushing. You know, you have some fools that come out and be like, we'll go back to Africa. We'll go back. You know what? If every single person who looked like me, who is what you call or who you call black Americans, abandoned this country, this country would sink faster than the Titanic. And they know that. They know that. They know that the hand of God is on us. And they know at the right time... They will reap what they have sown willfully. And whatever you sowed that you didn't want to willingly do, but you still went along with it, you're going to reap that too. Let's get on with it. By 1868, more than 700,000 black American men were registered to vote in the South. One white Republican in Alabama said that black Americans voted their entire walk in strength. No one stayed at home that was able to come to the polls. With black American voters came black American elected officials. During Reconstruction, over 1,400 black Americans held federal, state, or local office, and more than 600 served in state assemblies. Many of these new black American officials were formerly enslaved, and many took seats formerly held by men who had enslaved others. The ranks of elected black American officials included 16 black American men elected to Congress, 14 to the U.S. House of Representatives, and two to the U.S. Senate. The election of black Americans into office, however, did not translate to full political representation. Black Americans took a lower share of elected seats in both state and federal office relative to their proportion of the electorate. And rising presence in the office did not always carry greater power at the highest levels of state government. White politicians, including Republicans, who had favored emancipation and black American enfranchisement, treated black American elected officials as junior partners in government. In 1874, 16 black American politicians in Louisiana publicly complained of being excluded from any knowledge of the confidential workings of the party and government and not infrequently humiliated in their intercourse with those whom we have exalted to power. 
Over time, white northern support for Reconstruction collapsed. Southern Democrats intensified violent and insurrection, and white northerners tired of the economic and military costs necessary to enforce equal rights and economic depression in the 1870s further weakened the federal government's resolve and undermined support for pro-Reconstruction officials in the South. To regain support, President Ulysses S. Grant's share of power was with Southern Democrats who opposed Reconstruction, causing one Northerner to complain that the government was filling each department with Southern Democrats to placate the rebels and get their votes. These pressures came to a head in the presidential election of 1876, when both candidates, Republican Ruther Ford B. Hayes and Democrat Samuel Tilden claimed to have won due to contested votes in the southern states where election violence and fraud was high. And we all know what happened with that. The Republicans took that opportunity to sell black folks out so that Democrats could get what they wanted. And that ended the Reconstruction era for black folks. Black folks had achieved a lot during the Reconstruction era, and it was just decimated because of the selfish choices of two parties. Black folks were thrown under the bus. Next topic will be California. And I would like to discuss California in its own video. I don't care if it's a five minute video, 10 minute, 30, 50 minute video. I want to give California its own spotlight because California got a way of carrying itself like you're haughty, prideful, like, you know, you know how California is, especially if you live in California. Now, I want to use this opportunity. I want to create a, a video on this topic about California by yourself because like I said you know a lot of people California is in the forefront of talking about reparations and you know you can't really do too much with talking about it and a lot of people want to play ignorant and be like well California didn't have slaves but no California did its own disenfranchisement against black folks and that's included in, you know, the repercussions of slavery. You're not just paying reparations, repairing the damages that were caused, the damages that were caused by slavery. You're repairing the damages that caused, that came with the um, vines of slavery, the repercussions of slavery, the extensions of slavery, which is racism, which is discrimination, which is everything that this government did on local um, state and federal levels to disenfranchise black folks that's what reparations include so since california is talking about reparations since this is election time california you get your own video with that being said this video is coming to an end and i will pick it back up on part two where i will be discussing california in a shady messy self until then, take care, be safe, and I will see you in the next video.